All right, I'm calling the meeting to order for ACC for June 18th. And do we have the approval of the minutes on email? We have no guests today because of the COVID. And as far as the chair report, we uh, are welcoming George Kittner to the ACC. This is his first meeting with us. Uh, we still have one opening and we will be interviewing someone today and I believe we may have a few other applications that might be going in. Um, we wish Tucker a good time on his vacation. <coughs> we will miss him here. So um, I, I don't have anything else. Uh, <coughs> we don't have a board member report since Tucker is on vacation. And do we have anything from Stephanie for staff? Um. The one thing that I want to make sure that we cover at some point today, and not, not now, but um, we're still sort of struggling within the compliance and PI side of this on specific rules that, that are no longer in place. So, signage is one of them. Uh, specifically, we've got some questions surrounding political signage, what constitutes a political signage, the way that the current covenants read. There are no, no signs at all allowed in residential subdivisions, which means garage sales and everything else is sort of prohibited. <coughs> so we really need to re-adopt our signage rules, whatever they morph into pretty darn quickly. And, uh, and then there, you know, there are a number of other things like that. So that's really Before we get off the minutes, uh, I was just wondering, uh, the last ones that I have uh, released 6-8-2020 uh, under Heraldi Elaine, it says, Total confusion hold for 618 meeting. Is that the way? Is that <laughs> Sorry, the way? That was me. <laughs> yeah, is that the way we want to keep it in the minutes? No, that, that needs to be corrected because we did do an email vote on that and there yeah. was a majority vote that approved. How, how do we do that today or? Yes, we yeah. can add that. Okay. We can add or, that today. What was that addressing? Uh, three Heraldia, H E R A L D I A Lane. That was in last month's uh, right. and that was like, that was my fault but it the the circumstance was at the we, time we were already down to tuesday and we still had to put out minutes. yeah my only concern is do we want to leave it that way that's all yeah, and, and we, we can so we can I, add I the, 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 the correction into today's minutes i may have actually fixed it in the submitted minutes of the but we can we can certainly note it in in the minutes for today's meeting that sure. it was done by email and the majority of the committee voted for approval but it may have actually gotten fixed no yeah. but we can make make sure yeah. that it, it is it doesn't matter as recorded okay. somewhere okay. does anyone else have anything before we delve into the permits Go back, if you don't mind, just a second. Stephanie's point on on the rules that I understand your position, but I've been trying to ease back toward these guidelines, which are not the rules. I, I, I I'm I'm trying to disconnect those two, and I don't know how we're going to take care of your side of it, but I I really didn't want the guidelines to become a formal document, enforceable document. I want the good guidelines. So the only way we can, we can inform the community of what the rules will be. So again, if we don't, if we don't allow, the way the protective covenants read today, the 2014 version, there are no signs allowed in residential areas. Yeah. If we do not have a, a, an adopted by ACC vote, that what we recommend as approved signage in residential neighborhoods is garage sales or political signs or whatever that may be, then then we have then then the compliance division is going to tell people they have to remove their garage sale sign. You are not allowed to have one. I'm simply trying to figure out a process. I don't think you can separate them fully. No. You have to have an, an, an adopted. It doesn't have to be board adopted. The committee can adopt it as a set of guidelines that we use. And that way, and those are published. Though it's published because we've dealt with it in open committee. We've had a motion. Okay. The committee, you, you know, unanimously agreed that this is the rule that we're going to work by. You know, these are the guidelines we're going to work through. So they're published. So, and that's the way our, our rules read: is that if it's a published rule or regulation, then that's what's enforceable. 
Well, again, I, I just want to sort of push this less formal, our, our short version, essentially written to the residential homeowners with a little clip on the bottom that's for commercial that says <clears throat> we're going to be tougher on you. We, you might want to use without getting into every single sign the, the, and definition. The folks that I've talked to are upset that what we have right now are very vague and and it kind of opens the door to people doing a lot of things that are going to be frowned upon once they're done yeah. <clears throat> and they they're like what happens to our property <clears throat> values so they are concerned mm -hmm. they were uh, their biggest consternation over it was it was 115 pages well it was so mishmashed and intertwined with residential and commercial and and diagrams and charts right. and you know you've done the rough a rough draft I've been using okay. that as the skeleton and kind of fleshing it out that was my intent. personally I'm down from 115 pages to 64 right now and I haven't finished yeah I I can envision us probably having something that's about 35 to 40 pages but that doesn't mean that we have a huge number of, of rules or guidelines so a lot of that page usage is explanations right. some people can look at something and know instantly what they can and can't do other people have to have several instructions I so if we if we try to formulate this booklet guideline whatever and have a cover page with the actual rules on it and then an index page where they can go over and see what the explanation for it is. I think we're going to see that we only have maybe 15 or 20 at the most rules because there's a lot of things. We've got the solar, we've got generators, right. we've got landscaping, we've, we, we have a lot of stuff. But when we get into signs, we've got 33 of those. Well, see, we, we need to, where, and but that's what we're doing when we're going back through and reviewing what was there, mm -hmm. what what is what is still needed from that 115 pages, and what don't we need? The mailbox one was the perfect example. There was <laughs> what seven or eight. It was, it was about a page. Yeah, there was a whole ton of rules, and we've got it down to must adhere to U.S. Postal Service standards and requirements. I. Now, do, do we need to maybe put distance or something in there? Because some people may need that. So we might, we might have to go from one line to that. two or three just, just to let people know what the postal standards are. Um, but Well, honestly, I, so, so let, me, let, me, let me say this. So what the, what the public is asking for from the Permitting and Inspections Office, when they walk in our door and we have a list of permit requirements, the things that you must get a permit for before you can start construction. All they really want to know is, I want to put a fence in my yard, tell me the rules around that. Mm -hmm. We don't have any adopted rules. And all I need to get to is when I hand them their permit application for fences, I can hand that, that application for fences on the back side of it states the rules for fences. So for each permit that, so I don't, to your point, I don't know that we need a formal new document with, with, an, with an appendix and with a table of contents, we need, for the permits that we issue, rules for each. Solar panels, what are the rules? Fences, what are the rules? Docks, what are the rules? Amen. And so we can do those just one by one by one, and like you said, you know, okay, let's just take fences. Your, you know, we, we review that section, what do we want to change, what do we want to keep? I'll approve, you know, kind of go, and then just move on from that. And then the things like mailboxes, that's really a part of the new home packet. It doesn't even need to be, we don't ask you to get a permit to put a mailbox in. It happens when you build a new home, it's a part of the new home packet. So some stuff just, it just morphs into different things, but really all I'm asking for is rules around the permits that we issue. So people know what we're doing. Does that well, make sense? Mm -hmm. I think well, we're gonna get there by ourselves, the, the process is, the process is still, it's not gonna be a one week process. And no, and that's why and we, like we be, need. No, I just I just want this to have a sense of urgency about it. So let's. Cut, I mean, however we can. What What are you experiencing in permitting besides signs that's like 
we need to look at right away? Well, there's there's no rules on fences okay. in our protective covenants. It there's used to be no four feet, then it went to five feet. It, it, and then it, it went away completely. It's just that there's no rules at all now on fences. It's just we don't have any adopted guidelines that state you can't have a, a six or eight foot privacy fence. We don't have a rule that says you can't have that. We don't have a rule that says you can't have a, a chain link fence non-coated on a lake. We, just, we have no rules at all right this minute. So we had them. They, it just, you know, you know. Did you talk to Tucker about this? Because I get the feeling from Tucker that he wouldn't want that. As far as he's concerned, he has everything that we need and everything else is a judgment call. Well, I, I, I agree that what Tucker would, would like for us to do is, is uh, evaluate each on its own merit. Right. But, but knowing that there are some consistencies within the process that people need to count on. You know, we can't, we can't just always say anything goes because people need to know a little bit about what they can expect as an approval process. And, and the subjectivity causes, causes they can count on a lot of concern. We're going to make a blind decision on every single one. They have no yeah. idea what it is. I mean, I think that's, I think Tucker actually is I fine is. with there being some rules around fencing, okay, rules around good. science, rules yeah. around. Yeah, he, he just, he just wants us to be open-minded when something pops up that you know, if there's a reason to do it, even though the rule says don't, then we well, should Well, you know, at one time we had something very similar to what you're talking about. It used to be right. on the wall. you pick it off the... Exactly right. Remember that? Exactly. Okay. And, uh, and that was a good system. And I think that's the system really Tucker's looking for us to get back to. And so, yeah, it's not necessarily redrafting a whole document. It's just we need to define the rules around each of the permits we issue. Let's let's do this then, and I know it only does it gives us a two week window or three week till our next meeting. Dwayne, you've got that rough draft that you did that that I'm using as the skeleton of fleshing out. Could the, you the forward that to yeah. George so he he um, and then you look look it over. Do you have his book with the old covenants? I didn't give him the old. I gave him the 2014 <laughs> version. Okay. I can give them the other. I was going to say the old, old, whatever they are, that we were working with a couple months ago, so that he knows how we were viewing things before it changed at the word meeting. Why don't I give him the abbreviated thing that I pulled? That I pulled, I pulled <coughs> the information found within the 2018 version of the protected covenants that related to our permits, because I was trying to get to what I just described. I could give him that, which, which has our fence rules. It has our, you know. Yeah, and just, it just, you know, everybody rules. go it's over, just, review, yeah. you know, like some of us have already been able to start, mm -hmm. you know, jot down comments, questions, concerns. Next meeting, plan on it maybe being longer so that we can sit here and. <laughs> Sorry, that's no problem. <laughs> George is like, yeah. oh, what did I sign up for? No, no, <laughs> this is fun. Um, let me add some humor to it. Uh, four foot is good for most dogs. Maybe if you've got a bigger dog, five foot. Nine foot, you only need that if you're raising chickens. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next question, do we allow electric fences? We do. Good. Uh, uh, underground. Sort of. uh, underground, <laughs> not above ground. Yes, yeah, the underground. The, the underground. In invisible fence. Oh, dog wearing I dog. thought the kind that keep deer out. No. Okay. okay. Well, now I know something. I got to go back to Atwoods and get my money back. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so yeah, and Jana, you're like you said, we can do it at the next meeting, or we can hold a special meeting. I mean, however you want to do it. If you want to dedicate what, what, a meeting to that What is the committee at this only? point that we have want want to do? Do you want to try to handle it at the the, at the end of next meeting, or do we want to meet sometime prior to that? I would love to handle it at the next meeting, but not with the idea that we're going to finish it. Uh, I don't think this is a one sitting where we have to make every well, decision do, Well, I'm, I'm concerned because Stephanie and compliance is sitting there kind of out in the open. So do we want it? But I mean, that, that was something the board did. They took away what was existing without giving <clears throat> any time or chance. I understand. Um, they, they didn't this, have a backup plan. Replacing 115 pages but we're not yes. replacing 115 pages. The, the residential really was not yeah. well, all of that. Janet, I had it down to 10 pages. 
Could yeah. I could I do this so, for you guys and, and hope yeah. that this helps at least to get from what I need, my urgency. Yes. If, if I send you, if we revise each one of those permits, kind of back to what we had for one more, and send it to you, each one of you, here's our fence permits, these are the rules that we were working from before, mm -hmm. and, and send that to each one of you guys. At least that's a starting point. Yeah. You can move on with the other document later. Yes. And that way you could work. That's what I was saying. Whatever is the most and urgent. Keep, keep refining, keep working on it later. To, you know, to we, can, we can point. deal with the, the solar permits, we can deal with the ham radio. Yeah. Nod to George on that. <laughs> um, we can deal with that down down the yeah. line, but the ones that we deal with day in and day out and that, is a and compliance that issue. New permitting format, so you can see what kind of I'm hoping to get to, and then you can. And I think the on. property owners would appreciate that when well, they, I, I do too. When they come in and say, "I'm applying for a permit to do X," then we hand them a little sheet of guidelines that are particular to that yeah, request. Right here. February 18th. Well, but a little February 2018. Remember that date? February 2018? Yes. That's this thing. That's this well, that's the, that's the old protected covenants. That is the protected Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's your per application page. I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't recognize it. <laughs> so, well, so. Just, just the uh, information. Let's take something as simple as docs. Right. This is docs. That's the permit application. And back of docs are Perfect. all the rules and yes. regulations that apply. That's all I want. I didn't care about your document. Yeah. I want that. This <laughs> is what we need. Yeah. That's all I'm looking to get to at this point. That is. Two sides. Yes, yes, please go. And, if you can get it to I'll, us as, as rapidly as possible, those. then we can okay. all review it. You know, make your notes with what you think is still applicable and or should be taken out or if there's something to add and then we can review it at the next meeting and get Stephanie and her her team on the on the right road but Janet you are agreeing that going back to Stephanie's point if permitting has a request for a specific permit application then they can give applicable guidelines for that yes that then, I believe when we first looked at property here and and we had some concerns about you know what we would be able to do on property mm -hmm. we we did go to permitting and we were handed those types of forms and on the back it had the rules on it mm -hmm. and that's that's perfect I mean yes. we can we can always put together something else so that you know some people like booklets but let's let's do it on the back of the permits and then we can have something else <clears throat> down the road for those yeah. those folks because some do. property owners are saying well nobody told me <laughs> and if it's right on the permit yeah. application there yeah, you go you know. <laughs> and my version of that would be that that does become part of our rules guidelines and 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 then not every chunk of that has to be repeated in the guidelines exactly it can simply say and details are on back exactly exactly we're back to 12 pages <laughs> <laughs> okay i'm gonna bump that to 13. whatever <laughs> <laughs> okay you ready to start i'm ready okay <clears throat> And three lay hosts or something was the first of these. Um, it's a super simple. And I once upon a time had a picture that I don't think I brought. Anyway. Did you uh, send me a photo? I did. I've got it. I probably did. Here it is. Uh, would be, yeah. Three, whatever. I'm uh, pretty sure I scanned that. I don't know what I called it. Uh, well, I, and I'm sorry, since we've got it up, you'll see the upper right side is his backyard. And you can actually kind of see a little piece of sidewalk going to the north to a little square concrete pad another little concrete pad just to the right of his existing patio way down there right by the inn and lane uh, oh down here 
right there. Yeah. Those were those were put in 18 years ago when they built the house. Um, Is this a Google Earth shot? That's a Google Earth. I happen to love that. But one more maybe. Is this the purple one? There's the pergola. That's what he wants to stick on those couple of pads. It's sunshade only. S slightly smaller than the one drawn, but he's got the revised dimensions. Essentially a 12 by 12, all cedar kind of construction, open Pergola. lattice a roof. Pergola. It's, it's incredibly easy, it fits, it's on the golf course, but mm -hmm. you know, well inside the setbacks. And it looked like it was set back pretty so, well. Looks good. Yeah. yeah. I recommend it's approval. Mm -hmm. Real. Thanks. Ken, you're up. Agua Vista, number four. If we can note that it was originally assigned to me, Stephanie, uh, for Agua Vista and for Ribera is n now Ken's. Okay. That looks like an Aqua Vista. You did. <laughs> I sent them. For Agua Vista? She has the best pictures on there. There you go. Where? This is a Castleberry home, new yeah. construction, and a separate application for the dock. The uh, talk with Mike Williams, who is the contractor for the dock only, not the construction of the home. Uh oh, we got a problem. <laughs> Sticks out a little bit in the water, don't it? That's a problem. It says yeah. 22 feet from the property line. Yeah, in 28 feet. Not extended. Go back to it. No, no. Ah, not extended. 28 feet. Well, no, 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 extend no. the sideline. Extend the sideline on the property. He's not. He's not twenty feet away. Well, you don't. You, I know what you're saying. You're saying if the if the property lines go out into the water. That's right. That's what we always do. That's what we always do. This property line goes down this way, and he's not. He's got to be twenty feet in from the extended property line. Assume the property line goes out into the water, then the dock has to be back twenty feet from that. That's what we've always been going by. Now, if we're changing it, that's another thing. But that's the way we've always done it. You're going to give them a special dispensation, right? Well, we've, we've got that option. A barrier. Let's look at it. Let's look at it. But, look at it but you know, the, the, what we've gotten into is, you know, the neighbor may have a bit of a backwards pie lot, and he barely has room to get in there just driving into his... His we we try to look at the cold congestion. This is actually <laughs> in his extended water. That's that's one thing. The other and, thing and is people can't get in and out. The other thing that can actually block your view and of the that, adjacent person. Yeah. Of the lake view. Which one is it now? Uh, it's that's where Stephanie's got it's wonderful. <laughs> it's right on the edge there. Okay. Well, actually it's the one in that light green. So this is it, right? the neighbor has his dock way, way away. So he's talking about putting it right here. Yeah. Yes. Basically. Closer to the house. Yeah. And, <clears throat> and arguably the neighbors got a, the same little problem with not being 20 foot from the extended line either. Mm -hmm. You get into this on all these little codes. Um, Kim, you, did you visit with him about it? Verbally, over the phone. And, um, I mean, was he aware of the 20 foot thing? Yes, he is. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And he said he would meet those guidelines. Um, nothing has been done in the dock area. So you're saying, Dan, and I hear what you're saying. So basically, do so you see where my cursor is over here on this picture? Mm -hmm. He's wanting to come off of this line, basically, instead of kind of right through here. Correct. That is correct. And so when he comes out from this, he's you're you're gonna run into a basically where he's inside the twenty foot extended. Extended. Right? I, I, I'm looking to see if it. If Honestly, it, I think I know what you're saying. I mean, I, so many of them do that. 
Uh, I mean, just looking at this, this one, this one right here does it, you know? Right. You know, uh, and he couldn't most avoid of them would do that. Both sides. I don't think in this particular case it would be a problem for the neighbor because their dock is on the extreme other side. Um, these are their dock is more straight here. out than they want to go straight angle. out as opposed to parallel to. And I didn't see the drawing. He's he's going to have this three foot offshore or something anyway, away from the seawall. He doesn't want to be in the lake, so he's in the cold. Why not? No, it looks like it abuts the seawall. I couldn't tell from the sketch. It, it, let, let me let me quote something from the CMP. <laughs> well, all the right. CMP doesn't exist anymore. Well, but the point is, I'll be using that as a guideline or a judgment call. And what the CMP says, if anybody's interested in it, structures must be 20 feet from adjoining property lines and extensions of property lines into the lake. So that means you, exactly what I said. Your imaginary line goes into the lake, and you have to be 20 foot off of that imaginary line. And this would not put it that way. Now, if we're not going to use that, that's fine. But we're, well, we can't, we can't use that. We've been directed not to use that. Yeah. So we actually have to evaluate it just on. Okay, now, now it goes from being a rule to a guideline. Do we use that as one of our guidelines to make a judgment call? I mean, I or do we just forget about it altogether? I think it's up to the committee. So the question is, is, it, is does it make sense in this case? Does it make sense to um, to use that as a, as a guideline or does it not? But this is pretty my point earlier. Yeah, we I, don't have this. Uh, he's, he's protecting his dock. You. Well, when people come by at high speed with a boat, it's going to splash on his boat, boat deck or dock or whatever if he's on the other end of his property out towards the lake. So being in where, in the where he's it's suggesting in pr protects all that wood a little bit better from being washed away or something. I don't know how close yeah. it's going to be. Well, I mean, this is one of those things the, where it's, it's, it's going to be one of our judgment calls. What, what is the best for everyone in there? What is the best for the property owner? I like George's comment with it, it puts him further back from, from wake yeah. waves. It's not going to block the view of the next door neighbor because the house is angled differently. You know? I guess my compromise suggestion would be that you know, if, if he could move it a few more feet away from that corner, it would be better. And if he would consider swinging that another 15 degrees to He's the got right. a swim dock that's attached. I get it, but well, he's... Currently, he's 22 feet away from the corner. Oh, okay. that's, that, that's but on land On the corner. extended line, he's not. Well, that's true from the extended line. On the line extended line, he into the may lake. actually cross. He does. <laughs> that's yeah. what it looked like. And he's, he's got a, a weird but again, little if he, if dip he, in there with If the, he swung it, you know, he's already, he's four feet from his seawall riprap. Well, anyway. Let me, let me suggest to you this. It's, it, it's not going to matter. I know it looks like he's got a funny little zigzag there, yeah. but the reality is, is that the seawall is going straight across. Okay. So he could, so right now he's got here, he could move over another three or four or five feet just to sort of give a little more room to, to Dan's point about not being extending out. And it, I think it would fit on a seawall just fine. So you could, you could compromise as a, with the as, seawall. As a resolution to this particular one, yeah, no problem. Yeah. The point is, what do you want to adopt if, for, for all the other ones? You know what I mean? Do we talk to the neighbor or interview yeah. them or? You know, maybe that's a good idea. What is it going to be? You know, we've 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 avoided doing that as much okay. as possible because we don't really want to put neighbor against neighbor. Right. For them deciding for another what they can or can't do on their property. Right. So it's, okay. it's and, and the invalidity that. behind that is the neighbor could sell the house the next month and it's all start all over again. Okay, I'm learning something. Okay, that's good. Good answer. So I think you know. You know and in the future, if there's if it's a congested cove, and the only way that they can get their their dock in is to be into the extended line for some reason, then we can do a variance. That's different. Yes. And then we can exactly. do a variance. So this guy's got a lot of waterfront. Look, you know, 
I'm thinking, yeah, let's let's just ask him if he can slide it over. I'll be happy to call Mike and ask him. And other yeah. otherwise, I'm I'm sure the dock is is fine. We haven't really seen the elevation for it or well, the pictures. It showed the. Uh, I think it's probably pretty standard. It was. I think he actually had. He has a cover over it, doesn't he? Doesn't it have a. Roof? Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the boat yeah. slip itself is covered, and then he's got yeah. the yeah. swim deck yeah. open. Yeah. I'm comfortable with the dock itself for sure. There's a committee asking me to get back with Mike Williams to ask him if he can scoot four feet over. My suggestion would be that we approve a variance if he will move it another four feet. <laughs> and if he doesn't like that, bring it back to us. Uh, you know, not trying to put him in a bind, but and let's move it forward. And, it's, and technically it's not a variance, it's just with a condition. Okay. We'd be approving the we'd be approving the application with the condition that it's um, 26 or 7 feet from the property line, not 22 feet, to give it that extra room off the, and, the and extended. And would we require to resubmit a drawing so our inspectors have something to inspect? I'll just mark it on mm -hmm. on this. Get the cool from both right. <laughs> I mean, it's not a, it's not a technical <laughs> drawing. We've written in 22 feet, so we we'll just change it. I uh, uh, move that we approve with a variance. Or whatever. And uh, I will call Mike Williams again. Sure. Is it four or five feet? With condition four. of. With con I would say four. four. Okay. Yeah. And just explain to him that we, we realized he was measuring off that corner mm -hmm. on land, property line, but we have to take into consideration that extension into the water. So to avoid the issues with that, if you just slide <clears throat> it over there, there wouldn't be a problem. Yes. Okay. Approved, everybody? There we go. Thank you. I have a question on that, uh, Stephanie. Mm -hmm. Would he need to come back to Beverly with a new drawing? No, I'll, I'll, I'll adjust that one. It's okay, good. literally crossing one number off. Thank you. <laughs> Let's do it. The next one is mine also. <clears throat> um, Paul Rivera. I visited with Robert Peters at his home. If you know, you probably know Robert. He is the owner of the big uh, bowling alley outside the gate. Rest gate. Um, his, I sent a photo, by the way, um, of this also. <clears throat> his um, current deck faces Balboa Lake on the west side, direct sun hits mm -hmm. the uh, deck. He doesn't want to enclose the deck, he just wants to put a roof over the deck that would match the home in terms of um, the roof, except for there it is, yeah. Okay. Um, so it's pretty simple. His contractor has a list of materials, um, et cetera. Um, so I, I move approval. Second. Is it really easy against the uh building setback is um, it in within the building setback i mean it looks like the deck certainly is yeah. so it's it it's, is it's easy it's an existing deck so it has matching shingles so it's actually shingles to match yep and he's put in a gable roof right Yes. 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 Uh, open gable. Open. Good. Number four, Sir Lane, Dan. Oh. <laughs> wow. This is a little, little different order than I have it in. Okay. Sir so, Lane. Certainly. 
Okay, this is a. Uh, I have a photo of the existing deck, but what we have is an existing deck out there right now, which is this. Exactly, exactly this. Not this, just this. It. And it's beat up, and it's uh, the railing is not up to code, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And which one you want? all they want, leave it here. All they want to do is replace it exactly what they have, only bring it up to code and add another deck onto the outside. There's going to be a connection here. Now the stairs, they're going to redo all the stairs and bring them up to code and tilt them the other way. Basically, they're replacing what they already have. It's an outside deck, no roof over it or anything, no roof over this. It's all, this is now an open deck. And um, they're putting in that uh, Lowe's fence for the little dogs, you know, with the fencing. Mm -hmm. They're putting that, it's going to be their railing. So, uh, not fence, but railing. And uh, okay. it's pretty, pretty simple, pretty simple job. It's been, uh, uh, I think it was Clevenger is doing the job, if I remember correctly. Yeah, Alan, Alan Clevenger, Clevenger, Clevenger or something. He does a lot of, he's called the deck man. They call him the deck man. And, and that's it right there. Uh, oh, this, the, the button doesn't work over here. <laughs> But uh, uh, it's just uh, it's just replacing exactly what's there and adding that that addition in the back, yeah. and uh, I recommend approval. Okay, I'm next Your with favorite <coughs> property. Yeah, eight adoracion. This has been going on for about four months. No, this is a couple of years. 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 <laughs> years. Needs attention. They were actually supposed to have two permits in, one for what they <clears throat> originally came to us a couple meetings ago about, which they didn't do. Mm -hmm. And at that point in time, they put in an unpermitted patio slab. But um, Stephanie explained that they've had a death in the family, so this is the <clears throat> outdoor kitchen. Yes, okay. that that they're you know we're kind of taking it a little slow to give them some leeway on their on their brief. Um, Which one you want? Uh, well, let's just uh, start with that for now. When when they came to the meeting, or they they gave Stephanie the information that they were going to be pouring the concrete sidewalk on the seawall, which we had approved. That if there was any extra concrete left over, could they possibly pour this patio? And we said, yes, but they could not put the roof over. Right. A couple days later, I was over there for something else. I looked to see what the patio looked like, and this was dirt, and this patio here was put, put in which we had not even an idea that they were thinking of. There's no permit for it. This time they want to do this patio, but now they have this semicircular extension on it. It puts it about roughly, she's got four feet here between this, the sidewalk and here. It's about 14 feet from the edge of the seawall to back there. And this is only about four feet itself, so. They also over here have, this is where those stairs are. Right. They want to concrete all of this in. This already has the concrete forms down and the rebar foundation already set up. They also have not continued any of the concrete work here, which would have been under this permit. Oops, I'm sorry, I'm blocking everybody. It would have been under this permit because this is the continuation of that sidewalk for the seawall, but the forms and rebar are still there. And just haven't finished pouring that sidewalk yet. So they perhaps should have used that concrete for... Yeah, I was gonna say, where... Mm -hmm. So they are absolutely back in the setback. Oh, for sure. But we, now, this know. is just a patio. So I've got some just a patio, that's right. It's just an on-grade patio. 
So it's not, yeah, there's no concern about that really, but um, yeah, you do have pictures on the phone. I'm sorry. I have, it really cuts back on their landscaping and it is frontage because it is on Lake Balboa. Yeah, yeah. That is what they call the Y. And the only thing I'm thinking is of the Y is the, the semicircular type patio that they're talking about now is about where I'm standing. They, I don't think on the diagram they had an actual sidewalk in here, but then they've got all of this. Um, Not a lot of steel in there. <laughs> yeah. It really does not leave a whole lot of organic. I mean, the, the house is pretty close to the water as it is. That's the unpermitted that, patio. So that was what was on the permit application was just a, just like this sidewalk that you see yeah. here. That was supposed to be a sidewalk as well. But they went ahead and added this, this other additional patio. So that was a compliance concern. So that's why the permit came back to us this time to get approval for that. No. That's part of it. Part of it. They, and then they added to it. Yeah. Right? No, I don't believe so. I thought that was common property up there in the back of that cove. No. No, that's theirs. No, that's theirs. They have it noted on here existing, not permitted. That's right. Because they, they built it without a permit. So so the to, to get out of compliance problems, they had to get a permit. <laughs> so see, here you've got the, the pet. There's no form, obviously, on this, so I'm kind of guesstimating the edge of this patio, and then you've got right to the sea wall. And again, not, not leaving a whole lot of landscaping area. There's going to be a lot of concrete. Well, you can assume that those vertical rebars sitting up yeah. there are to hold the form work, so yeah. the form is going to go just inside those, those rebars. Well, it was, but there was nothing Right. out this way. You know, you've got the tree, but... Stephanie, do you have a feel? Are we ever going to get these folks happy and <laughs> done? Well, I mean, I, you know, they're... I mean, I don't, I don't know about happiness, but... <laughs> um, I mean, for certain, our, our goal is to get this thing complete, the primarily for the neighborhood. Yeah. You know, it's been under construction for a really long time. If you'll remember, this is one that we had, we waited just almost a year for Cooper to come back with the approvals to cut into the easement. And that was not because of the sidewalk or any of this work we're talking about, it was because of the boat slips. Yeah. So before they had a dock that was away from the shoreline, and what they did was they cut into the shoreline. And when you do that, you need Cooper's approval. So it took a really long time, and it's been a construction site for a year or and, and I did not get to talk to them. I called them to see if they were there, told them that I would be there in about 15 minutes. Um, that they, nobody had answered the phone. I got there, there were three cars parked in the parking lot or in the driveway, and there's two trucks on their neighboring lot. I mean, the specific, the specific thing that you're going to be making your decision on, because again, we don't have a specific landscape requirement at this moment, none of that, but exactly. but how does how do you feel about how this will look? I mean, is this going to be complimentary or not to the neighborhood to have that much concrete in their backyard? It's a pretty small, let me, let me, pull, small area. Yeah, let me pull back up the uh, the permit so you can see the plat. Yeah. So they have yeah, remember needs. their front yard and how nice it was? They the little garden area, yeah. and now it's a junk no. No. Like no. Oh, really? It's not bad. Like like take a pickup truck and launch yeah. a boat off. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Of that. So you'll see this is the you know, this awesome. is the house structure and the and the lake is mm -hmm. back here yeah. behind it. See where my mouse is going. So all of this construction is happening right in here. You know, here's the and today here's where the slips are. The slips are actually like right here. Yeah. You can't see it. You know. They do have a sand pit between where they want to kind of sandwich between that tree that was off the curved patio and the new core that they want to do in the seawall. There is a sand pit for grandkids to play in. But you think it's going to stay there? 
about the sand pit? Uh -huh. <laughs> well, right, so you can you see know, that house. it's an interesting shaped property anyways. Oh, the right. house is safe. You can kind of see it here, right? Yeah. <laughs> and they own that other lot, don't they? They own this lot yes. as well. They do. I, I don't see how they can... Uh, I don't see how they could not be on common property here. They're not. We've we've the we've been out. We've, we've, we've found all the, the pins. Top. We've actually done the, that work. Yeah. We did that a while back because that mm -hmm. was part of the work that we had to do with Cooper. It's close, but it's not. <laughs> it's close, but it's not. So that that patio that you saw in is the drawing the is corner. yes. Um, Didn't know you could do that. <laughs> it's right. It's right in here. That little patio, Peter stands it on common. And so basically, you have a, the patio and then the seawalls coming all the way around. And what they're wanting to do is patio this, like you said, this Y thing right here in the corner, and then another patio off here and a patio over here on the, you know, basically, right? Is that no, about right? The, it's, well, the other patio is kind of in this, yeah, in this area, yeah, here, and then this would come out. Yeah. Not too far off from here. Yeah. And then this whole section in here. And you can see the lines are obviously off a little bit on this particular mm -hmm. image, so you know, shift everything a little. So we have to make a determination of what are we going to approve, what aren't we going to approve, what are we going to do about the unpermitted section? Lots. Give them a deadline. Are you going to be done with this in six months? We've done that three times. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This has been yeah. going on. Ask them for a grand master plan. <laughs> two, two plus years? It's been going a good long while. Um, really said, I think that at the end of the day today, it is, you know, kind of set back from what was permitted and what was not. What would you allow? If, if they had done everything exactly the right way, what would you allow? And then we can deal with the you know, the fine here or whatever on the back side of that, but what, what would be allowed? And generally, I, I think what they're headed for is actually pretty decent looking. Um, if you will, the, the neighbor on the bottom of the lake, the, across from them, as I recall, that's already got the sidewalk, seawall, Yes, and that's, combo. One reason, that's one thing we took into consideration yeah, it, when they asked it, us it, It's a fit for the neighborhood. But we're not really talking about the seawall wall sidewalk, because that's the, the, mostly in. They just yeah. haven't finished the pouring job. Yeah. It's really those additional patios right. is really all you're talking about today. The seawall we approved a long time ago. They just haven't finished it. But they're trying to. What they're trying to do is, as they finish it, they want to add. They, you know, just they kind of decided they want to add these patios mm -hmm. as a part of the project. So. Well, I don't know. I can. I, so far, the permits that they've asked for and we've approved, um, we give them a permit and then they decide to do what they want to do anyway. It doesn't necessarily follow a permit. Uh, so you know, to them, a permit is I'm allowed to do this, you know, and they can do whatever they want. They don't exactly uh, follow a permit, but you're getting a lot of pressure from the other, from the other tenants or owners, yeah. right? And and that's that's basically the the, the fault of that owner who, who's who's doing this. That's their fault. Uh, but you have to deal with all the complaints. And what they want to put in is, is a little more progress. So I think from that point of view, we ought to look at it as we're getting closer to the finish finish line. Stephanie, and, can you go back to the pictures? And we can take maybe drawing. each segment at, at its own. Oh, those pictures. Okay. Okay. This is right up above the stairs that go down into the water. Mm -hmm. do, we, do we approve that or not? We're talking about just this patio. Yeah, that little piece. It's a patio that we would approve in any other situation. Correct. It's essentially at their staircase Correct. going down into the water. And my view is, that, yeah, that's not. See any reason not to approve right. it? All right. On to the other part of the patio that has not been formed this out. One? Well, right. the other one. Back the other way. Yeah. That's the same one. Yeah. Um, no, there's there's just, just the one dirt. before or after next to the house. The one that was originally supposed to be like rectangular and there. Got it. 
retroactive permit. But do they have any plans for what's going to go on in the lower left hand corner? <clears throat> See? Here. And that's the whole problem with this master plan. We don't know what the next step is over there. Do they so, intend to put more paving in there? I tell you what we could do. You could you could approve the, the concrete work with the condition that all of the, the remaining property, the land has to be grassed or something that's, you know, if you have all of that concrete and then put rock down too, you're kind of in this really, really kind of a harsh hardscape, if you will, of that entire backyard. So we could do it with the condition that the remainder of the properties have to be uh, landscaped in, in grass or organic material that cannot have rock. And maybe go one more step and declare that this part of the patio can never be covered. Put it out there now. Uh, they've shown us ideas where they were going to cover that and put the outside kitchen. Let's just, if, if we were approving this with the condition, it's not going to change. Yeah. Well, what you know, what you're saying is if you're not going to master plan it, we're going to do it for you. And if they're not going to accept it, then they don't have a permit to pour the patio. Right? The covering would, would push them into the setback anyway. Right. So at grade in the setback is different than a constructed but, right. a but construction. Can you, yeah, but can you enforce that? And then the other issue too was... A couple of ways. How much concrete? On the, on the on diagram, diagram and, and around the corner you from... Up the, the, the rainwater situation. It's a lake. Right. We're not going to mess up rain. Okay, it's going, going towards the lake. Uh, and, and again, we had a number. It got removed by the new board. We don't have the replacement. That's what we're talking about for next week. So, there. If and, you know, I don't think I don't think anybody but Dan was here when, and I was just one of the ones observing at that point when this came up with the outdoor kitchen, they wanted to actually put it around the corner. Right. So are they going to end up coming back to us saying in this little nook over here, we want to put another concrete slab and put the outdoor kitchen in there. It wasn't on that concrete pad that they're talking about here. Okay. Yeah, and they're going to want a roof over it, which will go into the 20 foot setback. <laughs> so, you know, they, would, they haven't would have been, applied for a roof. We've not approved not yet. Roof, so yeah. It would have been tucked, that outdoor kitchen would have been tucked back in here because that part of the house, the living, the living room slash their business is right here and then it goes over. Now we've got a little bit of a problem there. We have approved covers on those book slips. Although it's our permit that I suspect has expired. Yeah, but this this wouldn't be. The, I'm not talking about a cover on the boat slip. I'm I know, talking but, about. But that's the extension to be part of the kitchen. Right here is the boat slips. Right here. Yeah. Yeah. But in this is where they want to put. Oh, sorry. Thank you. I did. Put have that one. that new. It was originally supposed to be the rectangular patio. Now it's got the little curve to it, and then they were going to tuck the outdoor kitchen back in here. So now we've got the potential for them to be putting another concrete pad in. Well, they haven't, they haven't requested it. Yeah. So but I, don't, I don't think we should vote on maybe. Right. Someday they might. Let's just do what they've submitted. Maybe we just need to act on what they've submitted. So as far as the new pours, does anybody have a problem with the new pour additions that they want to do? Not if we restrict it as was suggested. That's what is our recommendations on the one that they've done without a permit? I didn't see a problem. It looks nice. But they went ahead and did it outside I of agree, the proper channels. Do we double? That's our that's our recourse is the is the fine for doing something yeah. with no permit. Basically we charge them double. I can't see us demanding a tear out. Give respect. Not if it's something we would have approved to begin with. And I'm sorry, it, it's, it fits right against a heavy slope at the road. They went it doesn't look like they ever intend to cover it, so. The, the roof? The, the, okay. the little, the, the one they pour out toward the road. Oh, it's, it's actually right out here. Yeah, I, I yeah. didn't, you know, it, yeah, it's it kind of fits. Yeah. It's 
it's actually kind of right in that current question. It's not, I don't think, affecting anyone else's view of bad ways. I would be, I personally am comfortable approving it with the condition that, that they have to keep the remainder of their landscaping in that backyard organic. They can't, they can't rock the yard back there and have them gravel. Now, when you do the double fining for the unpermitted, can it be slipped in there that we could have made them remove it so that it plants that seed in their head that they need to be aware that if they do something else that is not permitted, that could very well be what they would end up having to do. You know, I, I think. We can certainly talk to them about that. We're, we're extending them a, almost a courtesy of just doing the double fining, whereas we could say out. And they need to be aware that they, they keep doing these things without going through the proper channels. There's got to be some repercussions down the road. And I think this is the first step with the, the double fining. It hurts in the pocketbook a little bit. so It's nothing compared to the cost of what they pour in that patio. Well, look at all the land they reclaimed into that lake. They must have 20 foot of land in there that they reclaimed into that well, lake. That, that line is probably that line line. not really, that's not surveyed in any way. Yeah. Oh, okay. But I, and, yeah, that's, and the surveyed plat doesn't show it that way. It's an overlay of the jazz. It's question it's is, not, is uh, not compliance not still, I mean, is con compliance currently finding them, Jenny? For anything? We're, we're, we're working with them right now. <laughs> so we are going to approve of what they have submitted, the extension toward the stairs, the patio off of the residence with the curvature added to it. We're approving the unpermitted patio that they pour closer to the street, but a double fine will be incurred on that one. And Everybody in agreement and on And we're going to add the requirement that organic the remaining material. shall be organic and none of these patios shall ever be allowed to have a cover over it. Because of the height and the setback. All for right reasons, but, but it's not but, part of the we, permit. You know, we're just we, staying we can, a little bit We can apart. stand on the setback issue with the height. That that is I, a definite. With their history, I'd just like to say it. I'll add that. Thank you. All right. So, do I, we approve of what we just <laughs> talked about? All right. That was a toughie. It's been a long time. This is incredibly easy, so uh, I recommend it's approved. Um, I'm sorry the copy is tough, but that little thing in the north corner, uh, the upper corner, is all they're really talking about doing. And the majority of all of that landscaping is in place and has been for 20 years. There's a small square with an arrow in the middle of that thing that he wants to level off so the, the chairs, he said, put some flagstone down so that the chairs will not tilt downhill. <laughs> it's one of those things that it's close to not, uh, by the way, there's, the plat's not quite right. On the little extension to the driveway on the far right side, there's now a two-car garage. The patio on the back has been reconstructed and rebuilt so that it's, it's nothing like that. It's full house width. Those, Stephanie, do you have a Google view? Uh, I think I did. Oh. Well, you probably didn't get a permit for the patio on the back. Yeah, I, I think that. Oh, and, did? And, and again, I think it was actually by a prior owner anyway. Okay. So they're basically doing like landscape maintenance? Landscape, I didn't really think it needed a permit, but you know, that's fine. Is this? What, yes. And <coughs> if you go to the next one or two, that was not it. <laughs> <laughs> you just put a lake in their backyard. 
Uh, you can vaguely see his string lines and his couple of chairs. All he wants to do is raise that front side about 10 inches. He's going to do it with, with a wheelbarrow and shovels by himself, put flagstone out. Yeah, so I recommend it screw. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Doing a lot of work on the dog. He's a nice guy. He's that tiny guy. <laughs> work on himself. Okay. I would suggest that we take this one, but this is Larry's project. Larry broke off who's going to come in later if you don't mind let me run through it if there are particular questions we then can, we wait can until table he until arrives. he gets here yeah but um yeah if you could thank you but if you notice <coughs> the on the bottom drawing this bottom left corner is the proposed shade canopy i can't see that yeah um, and on the upper drawing is the side view of that same canopy. From the side, it's not very apparent anyway, but, but the plan is here is to do this as a metal standing steam roof. It actually, it stands out a little bit here because it's not a color rendering but the color of the metal and the color of the shingles are going to be pretty close to identical. There's still a little question, it's a brand new purchase. <coughs> it's got like a three year old roof, they may be changing the roof color. <laughs> but that's their choice. Uh, it's a, again, it's an architecturally designed, rendered thing. This is in uh, Del, uh, Diamante. Diamante. Come up with it. Um, everything is pretty straightforward. Diamante actually has several other of these <coughs> metal roofed extensions. The one directly across the golf course from you this one. You put pictures. I, I showed some of you, but anyway. Um, again, it, and there's pine trees that look like there's a lot of pine trees. Help, I've yeah. got a picture of the house. Uh, was actually looking at, but that's that's the Google Earth version. So, what color is the roof? At the moment, it's black. <laughs> it's not going to be red when. <laughs> no, no, uh, uh, that is the color. When I look at it from the side, it looks a whole lot blacker to me. But again, there's a couple that's actually from the edge of the golf course. Everything we're talking about is behind that something tree on the left. <laughs> it's it's hidden, shaded. There's not a neighbor immediately on the left. The big lights, one acre or something like that. The Diamantes are big. I don't know if they're an acre. They're, they're, but they're big. Uh, again, a couple of dormers. On, this is the golf course side, so a couple of dormers. The dormer on the left, they're going to take out, period. These are fake dormers that go in the attic. <laughs> but, um, but again, it's a two-story back there. Um, they're going to extend a couple of those pillars that are there and put another row that's essentially out level with the back of the house on the right to square this thing off. What Larry has offered and uh, the owners have offered, <clears throat> this was set up as a three on two pitch here. It's still matching the 10 on 12 pitch on the side. Uh, they, uh, without a whole lot of pushing, have been fine with uh, moving that down to a two on 12 pitch. At two on 12, it is completely invisible from everybody's view, aside from the birds and the airplanes. Well, I think, you know, in the past, we've, we've kind of frowned on mixing right. the different materials for the roofs, but we have approved mm -hmm. some metal roofs against shingles, um, depending on 
what the view would be. Um, this seems to be kind of, and looking at the, I believe it was the Adams House across the. This is the uh, Adams House. Okay. The one the across is the Freebergs or something. Um, I mean, it didn't look bad. You can go down around Lake Hamilton and those McMansions there have that type of configuration on the roofs. It looks nice. Yeah, you know, it does look nice. I, I think, you know, if, if we're looking at the roofs with metal and shingle, you know, again, case by case basis, you know, instead of having a steadfast rule. So I, I don't see an issue with this at all. Um, and just for the heck of it, Larry actually showed me a four on 12 where he went to architectural shingle. And I think it looks pretty bad. Essentially, you've got a 4 on 12 versus a 10 on 12. They catch the light completely Yeah, it's going to be, no, it's gonna be it, noticeable. It would be but noticeable. If, you know, if they can construct it where it blends, I, I don't see that we're, we should be having issues with these. Uh, you know, this is the new trend, and we need to keep up with the new trend in architecture. What, what, what's the reason for going to metal? Is it just the pitch or is it some pitch, other reason? The pitch. Um, 2 on 12... Um, and a standing seam, these are actually tall standing seams, you know, it's, it's good, it's forever roofing, waterproof, no issues. You also considerably lighten the weight of that roof that has to be supported by all these new columns. So, you, you get... The, the dead load for that roof is nothing compared to the live load of people on it, but the, yeah. I see what you're saying, but I and, just, so and, it's the pitch really... Honest, that makes and they handle the wind load, to be honest, the, the uplift under that great big canopy, it's like 28 feet out, uh, is actually more a concern. And we've actually got drawings in the package of his foundation on those footings. You know, well designed. So, again, I recommend it. You know, strictly an aesthetic thing, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. All right, approved. Okay, I'm, I'm up for, next. But again, 11 cap Tura circle. This, this is a patio covering over an existing deck. Okay, Jim. And I think I've sent a picture in. Anything you want to review on this or just I'm sorry, picture? deck or patio? It, there's a there's a pre-existing slab. <laughs> And okay. they're just putting a cover over it. Okay. So All it's not, the other, it's not it, elevated. it backs onto uh, Isabella. Okay. Golf course, and then DeSoto's on the other side. <laughs> Every house on that strip has a patio covering, except for this house. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing outrageous about the design. So that that's the view from from the yeah. golf course from the cart path. Okay. Um, so, so lady living there. I don't know, no one was home. So I just I left said, a business card, I had <laughs> left a phone message and snuck around and <laughs> took pictures. How does You're the right, uh, how does it match up to that roughly how the pitch on it was So gabled roof, it, it, it's going to blend, it's going to look nice. It, at this point in time, as you go down to Soda and you look at that line of houses, that's the one house you see because it doesn't have a, a patio covering. So it, it will actually improve the view. So I would move to approve. It's a real small house. Yeah, it is. You know. There's got quite a foundation. Did you see the foundation? Uh, it got, it, 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 they've got footings on the interior. Which I, is, yeah, it, it was put on piers. It yeah. looks like a pre-stressed slab or something. Post-tension slab or something. I don't yeah, know. But post-tension slabs seldom have piers under them. <laughs> okay, this one's mine also. 11 Navigar. It backs on to Magellan Golf Course. They want to put a pergola, cedar pergola over their outdoor patio area. Those are pictures they submitted, and then I, I took a couple pictures. I'm not sure if they're any better. Um, quite, 
quite similar to the one Dwayne had as far as this the cedar. Yeah. So it, it, it will look nice. They've got trees between the golf course frontage and the house. So it, it'll it'll blend. It's a pergola cute. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yes. See cedar, so it's probably gonna be unfinished. Yes. So I'm I'm standing on the patio and for the golf right course right 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 that's it. So well, well, where where's it gonna sit? It's, it's gonna be up on top of the on the upper part of the patio. So it replaces the deck umbrella. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So I would move to approve? Yes. Approve. Dan, you're up next. Which one? Yeah, Fifteen verse says <laughs> lane. Fencing. Okay, this one's this one's pretty simple. Uh, it's going to be a Tommy's fence, uh, and it's it's a it's a Lowe's black tubular fence, and that that's where it goes. Right now, really just a dog run. Right, yeah. Right now he has a wooden fence right here, mm -hmm. and he's going to take down what what he has here and just put this in. And uh, chain link, it, no, he will not be going into the uh, imitation run iron into the easement area. He's stopping just short of the easement area. Uh, on the bottom, he's just given a, a, a more finite dimensions, yeah. It's slightly different shape, but uh, those are the dimensions. And uh, where it is is up there. There's going to be a gate right at the end which hooks into his patio. It's a pretty simple job. Black fence, and it's uh, Tommy's put it up. Recommend approval. Approved. Dan, 17 Royal Lane, the under deck storage. Okay, uh, these people have a uh, an overhang. And uh, underneath, they just want to put a slab. Yeah. That the house goes on, go is on top of it. Uh, it's basically an existing patio, right? Existing deck. Oh yes. No, it's, a, it's, it's not a, a deck. It's a house. It's I part mean, of it's a room. room. Yeah. It's an enclosed room overhead. That's what's underneath it. Uh, On these corners, there's there's columns, and the house is above it. Um, and all they're doing is filling in underneath the house with just a slab. Pretty pretty simple job. They already have put the forms and the rebars in, um, and I, you know, they they really shouldn't uh, pour it until they get the permit, and they're not going to. So. Uh, and, and then, then they, they want to enclose it. Then right? they go, yeah. Then they're going to enclose this with two buys, and it's actually going to be just a shell. For storage, it's not going to be an occupied home. There's no heating, air conditioning, or anything. Uh, they already have a light underneath there, so they don't even need electrical. So it's not going to be closed in. Yes, it, it will be. It, it is. Uh, go to the materials. I think he was going to use hardy board for the outside. Good stuff. Some place he says painted to match the house. Correct. It's in there someplace. Party backer. Mm -hmm. um, for that, you know. He calls it a hardy backer, hardy board, doesn't it? And he's going to have a door at the end. Okay. So, pretty simple, just a store room. Yeah, 10 by 15. Uh, pretty small. Recommend approval. Do we, do we want, since it's not noted on there, that the condition is that the, it needs to be painted to match the house? Yes. And all of this is for his wife's antique sleigh that her grandparents <laughs> that they put out at Christmas time. <laughs>
twenty Manson away. Oh, that would be Yep, Dwayne. This is a landscaping plan. This is it. <laughs> Can you just hit that minus arrow on time too? Well, it looks like a bunch of chickens doing a break dance. It does. <laughs> and, and honestly, I kind of think maybe there's a colored version of this someplace, but, but, but the way we're scanning stuff, it doesn't get captured. So, again, it's, it's real straightforward. Essentially, the, the, that's the front of the house, the top of the driveway. That's organic on the left, uh, natural trees and ground clutter on the left, on the right, and in the back. <laughs> um, a whole lot of the rest is uh, oversized Ozark rock. Um, it looks like the majority is is actually organic on this. I said 75% organic, yeah. yeah. Um, again, everything in my mind looks fine. They're adding some, a couple of planters on the back lake side. They're actually putting in zoya um, in the back and along the shoreline. What is on the lake? This, yeah. this is lake something. <laughs> Thank you. I got lake on mine. <laughs> this is it, this is um, Andrew Moore with Eminem. He does what he's a really nice job. Yeah, yeah. he really does. Uh, yeah. I, I saw absolutely nothing in question. Recommend. Approved. Dan, you're up. Balcone Way 21. Rebuild the home from the fire. Oh yeah. What was the address? 21. Oh, Balcone. This thing is out in the sticks. <laughs> nobody, <laughs> nobody lives out there, so there's nothing to compare to. But uh, the existing house, of course, burned down. Uh, what they have there is a, a hole with a driveway that goes right up to the house or future house. The driveway is still there. It's in perfect condition. <clears throat> I do have photos if anybody wants to see it, but I we can't hook it up here. But. Uh, Sure. Materials. Yeah, re re party. just party. building a, a whole new house. Even a, la a lot of landscaping is there. The trees are beautiful back there. I mean, it's a gorgeous piece of property. They're the only people on the cul-de-sac or cheap. on the is whole road. Is this wow. two lots? Yeah, it's it's huge. huge. It is wow. huge. Is this the lightning home? No. We had two. There was one on, on uh, oh, Lake Balboa that went up, and then there was a second right now, one. This driveway is in place, and it's cut off right here. So that, that whole driveway is there, and what they're doing is replacing this whole house. Same foundation? And there's the trees. Well, probably not. No. Yeah. Probably not. But the footprint, you know, the basic footprint stays. Most of the foundation is out. The only thing left, like I say, is the driveway. But where is it? Is that it? Interesting explanation of that. It is one lot. If if you rebuild on the wow. existing plan on the slab, almost an acre and a half. Have to Gorgeous, it isn't it? Burned house. And, the and, and do you, you see, see any other houses? Right here. <laughs> huh? You resale. can see this image has it burnt right here. Probably what we look at this image here. Yep, resale. There's where the house resale. was, wow. and here it is. That's in 2016, and here it is in 2020. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Wow. Sad. Sad. And you you can see. You can see the driveway. This is the driveway right here. Huh. Okay. And it just stops. And then there's a hole where the whole basement was. Wow. It's amazing. So they're just replacing the whole house. Uh, you know, it, it all meets. The, the, colors, the colors are fine. I mean, they're all acceptable colors. There's nothing to match in the neighborhood. As you can see, there's nothing around there. <laughs> And it's, it's a, a lot of common all around it too. Well, where, where is this? <laughs> this is, you know, where Mas uh, it's up. It's up where Cortez and, and Ponce de Leon, all the way up in the north so part of the village in Ponce right. de Leon. It's okay. an absolute edge of the village. Way up there in the upper left-hand corner there. This is Cortez Golf Course, and this is that property right there. You can see my mouse. 
I've been to that house. Oh, really? This is the it, lookout. If you go to the lookout tower was, and see the lookout over Lake Lago, it's right here. Wow. It's a, it was oh. a beautiful home. Yeah, I'm sure it was. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. That's so, Cooper, I don't know if you guys know this, but in that area up there, Cooper subdivided some of the village into five-acre lots. I didn't know. They're like so estate lots. And that's so you'll notice, if I if I zoom in, you can see that, see how big those lots are up there? Yeah, wow. Like you can see what a third-acre lot looks like when you see one of these down here. That's like your typical third acres. These are these five acres, and his is not a five acre; it's an acre and a half. But these are these are big lots up there. Yeah, yeah we went we went They're up there. Mountain goat hitch, though. <laughs> the very, 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 very the prior owner was selling at a garage sale, and we went up there, yeah. and it was beautiful. It was the last home that they had to dynamite blast <laughs> for the foundation <laughs> in the village, and he's like, I have I have a ton of deer, I have bears. I have everything. He has a view of the valley that uh, to the north, and then a view that that's the sunset view, and then he's got the morning view. It, it was an absolutely stunning house. Uh, I'm really sad to know that that. I thought it would be a much bigger house. Yeah. It's only 1,600 foot. That house. Really? Yeah. Okay. But it's uh, and uh, you know all all the products are acceptable. All of the siding, the color. Uh, see the shape, architectural shingles. It's all, it's all typical home. Approved. Can we do it? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> all right, this would be me again. Another landscaping permit. And again, I did not detail measure. I still claim it's greater than 50% organic in the front and about 50% organic in the back. Somewhere around 10 or 12 trees, to be honest, he's got a whole list of trees and the annotation on that plat are slightly different names, but uh, if, if you will, I'll just help it. Which one do you want to look at? The list of trees or the? The, no, the, the plat, where, where do you work, yeah. Again, uh, He's got two grass areas that's artificial grass. Uh, we need to fix that in our next round. Um, the, the planting beds are significant sized. Uh, there's a whole lot of foundation, beautiful, you know, not just, not just a mustache. The, this has some character in those beds. Trees on the left and right of the driveway. I certainly recommend it. Well, I noticed the trees were a lot of different evergreens. So a lot, that, yeah. That's going to uh, offer some nice texture and contrast, too. So. I just couldn't tell which was where. Yeah. But, uh, you know, yeah, it looks perfect. Do we me. have a vote? Approved. Okay. And I guess I should mention, he's also going to put in a little bit of flagstone on one of those patios. What do you mean by organic? Uh, Instead of gravel or what? Not gravel. Anything. Not it's anything gravel not gravel. Is essential. Okay, that's so problem. mulch, grass, artificial grass, we need to add that. Uh, but yeah. Just and, so that people know. Because it's it, artificial grass is used frequently throughout the village. Um, the POAs even used it at Waypoint. Mm -hmm. um, but just so that people don't, <laughs> can I or can I? Right. It's there. And, it, it just, and it's becoming better and better quality oh, yes. and more and more common. So. Oh, yes. Sometimes you have to walk up to it and actually mm -hmm. feel it. <laughs> Do you notice the little building beside the air conditioning compressor? Oh, yeah. That, is the, that is the request for this permit. Oh, they already put it up? That's Photoshopped. <laughs> uh, you know, and I like that. I mean, so he did had, such a The solar job. panel that we had last time, they had photoshopped it onto the roof. I, I like that idea, so we have a better visual. Uh, uh, again, this guy's actually putting it on a slab. It actually should do well. I did favors. But, you know, it's, uh, it's yeah, that's house. the building four by seven. I think that's essentially what last week was I think most of us have seen that at Lowe's or Home Depot. I think most of us have probably seen those yeah, at Lowe's yeah, and Home maybe. Depot. But again, it, it is on the side. It's on a golf course. I, I ask 
if he would be offended if we specified a screening bush, at least there on the golf course corner, he will do it, no problem. Uh, with, with that, I, I would certainly recommend that this is, it's, 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 you know, it's, it's as shielded a corner and shed as you're gonna get on a golf course. Yeah. So he agreed to plant something? Yeah, and we can put it in there as a spec. Uh, it was offered without any particular. Now that's another item you have to say for your guidelines, whether or not we're going to require or suggest shadow wall. We used to. Shadow walls? Fencing? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That was one of the options to a, 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 a planting because a lot of plantings in the winter time are not plantings. But depending on the type of, you know, if it's yeah, a, an evergreen, then right. yeah. they're going to be good. But. Yeah. Good thought. Yeah, I can't vote on this one. Hmm. Oh, okay. 29 Lorita. Oh, this, this is that arrogant that, owner. Yeah. I, I, I've been hearing about this <laughs> thing for ages. It's Jeb's. <laughs> what is it? Do you see the bridge in the middle of that lot? Let me get the aerial. This, this one's better served <laughs> than what it is via aerial. Stephanie, are there any other lots that have a creek in them? I don't know about this. Is an, <laughs> this is, it's unique. It's beautiful. There, 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 there are quite a few. There really are. Most Not a 20 them, foot creek. Most of them are more decorative bridges than yours. Yeah, but this is, this is so actually this is a the drainage way that comes off. This is a, this is a creek. Yeah, big creek. Yes. big creek. And it's running right through the middle of Janet's lot here. You can see. So she's wanting to build a bridge across it. Put a bridge, not build a bridge. I set pictures. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. You really want to get of, of what the what the lay the no, she's terrain do really the way it is for she's now. She's got how deep is that creek? About a foot. The water's about a foot, and then if you if you're standing in it from from the land down to the bottom of the creek, probably Six three feet. to four maybe at the most. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's a little deeper than that. But anyway, uh, the bridge is probably located right about here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Currently, we have a bridge here. <laughs> no, I use that word bridge quotes. It's a two by box. twelve or something. A couple of two by twelves. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of kind of cranky. Bob <laughs> Sawyer and Huck can't live at my house. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, <laughs> obviously, it's one piece of property. Big property. Now the question is, to make a federal case out of this, the question <clears> is, does the does the person who own this property own the water? They don't. However. Not owning the water, what does that mean? Does that mean that this is navigable? No. Kayakers can go in there, so it's navigable. I checked with the yeah. I, I checked with our uh, Brad Meredith. It, it is navigable water, but it doesn't matter. She owns the property. She could put a bridge there. Uh, we even talked about putting a couple of uh, uh, culverts in there and building a walkway over it, making it solid instead of a bridge. Okay. But that creates a dam situation, and dam situations are, well, damned. <laughs> so the best thing is is to put the bridge. Yeah. What they're offering is, uh, and we'll show you the drawings, is a, is a nice looking bridge. It should be anchored, at least on one side, so it will sit on something, some kind of concrete step or a footing or a pad or something. This is the bridge. A 14-year-old did those drawings. Wow. <laughs> Quick concrete pads on the each okay. with four by sixes embedded. Uh, I, I don't yeah. know if it's okay. better to, to anchor just one side and let the other side be okay. free in case you get a lot of water hitting it or something, but uh, it, you, it, can, it can anchor both sides. Yeah. Uh, Meredith have have had no problem except his biggest concern was uh, whether this would increase the condition of causing erosion under the bridge. And um, I said to him, it's sitting pretty pretty high up. It's sitting on rock. It's 20 foot long, so it's going way back. It's not like it's coming in right at the edges. So it should not interfere with it. So instead of making it a condition, he said he strongly advised that some kind of erosion control. So some riprap. Under, under the bridge would be a good idea. Just a 
than on your road away at some point? Other than that, he has no would problem. You, would you slide up to that? Uh, this way? I think it was more your air photo. Oh. It looked like there was an adjoining. Is that an adjoining bridge? Where? This? Left. No, that's the same. Left, left. Left, left. Oh, over here. That guy. That's a trail. That's, that's our the, trail. Not it looks like a bridge. It is a bridge. It is a bridge. Okay, so this, it's not the only bridge across this creek. No, that's, that's the POA's property. When you, when you get to the blue line on there. the creek, huh? that's where a sewer line, an elevated sewer line goes across. This is and, and it's there. not navigable at that point. Right. There's rocks in the creek. Thank you. This okay. Is, yeah. Uh, yeah. Fitness Center you know. and that's the trail Fitness. system and so forth. So, so Stephanie, if you want to pull up the photos I sent, Dan asked me to take okay. pictures and I did. So you, everybody kind of gets a feel for <laughs> what we have right now so we can get over there to maintain the property. That was built by the Tom Sawyer Company. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's going to be you know that's that's standing on the main lot looking over, um, and that's basically I'm standing where the planks are right now. Going to go right across here. Yeah, free water. Yeah, this is uh, that's the tell tells. <laughs> yeah. So, for we'll thank you all. All right, I'm up next. Fashado, it's landscaping on a new home. There's lots of existing trees. They're going to be putting foundation plants all around the house. So it's it it more than satisfies what we have. Well, that looks nice. Yeah. Yeah, I took I took some photos too to get a, a better idea. I mean, <clears throat> they're it's going to be real pretty. Doing a lot of planting. Yeah, I'm saving a whole lot of natural. Yeah, it's 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 they're going to have a driveway. It, it's on a corner, so they're going to have two driveways. One that kind of goes up to the front of the house, Oops. Mm -hmm. um, and then <laughs> one one that comes down the side to the garage. But it's framed on on both sides, and Stephanie can. That's that's a back corner of the garage. Okay. There, they're going to put plants all around that foundation. They're going to put plants all along the foundation there, and that's that's tree line between the street and the house that was on yeah, the left. Okay. That's standing across the street, not directly looking at the house, but kind of at the at the curve of the corner. So there's lots of trees. And I think there's one face on. There's the face on. So they're going to have this driveway going up to the front, um, but it's narrow but kind of deep house. Yeah, and it's it's very it's nicely accented with those trees going in. Yeah. Nice job. And they can still see the house, which is yes. Nice. And then you know, there's foundation plants going in along the front edge. So uh, I would move to approve. Great. We're getting very close to not denying anything. <laughs> yeah. To what? We don't have and that's what we want. <laughs> we don't want denial. <laughs> this one's mine. It is, well, this is going to be a little issue. But, um, 33 Pinocha, they want to put a prefabbed garage shed to the left side of their existing garage somewhat separated from the house because then they would have to reroute their electrical and water yeah. it is on the golf course they will it's going to be wood sided to match the it's going to be like a mahogany brown color to match the brick on the house it's a wood shed they will put brick fascia on the front to match the house. I asked about the rear view to the golf course and they were going to leave that wood. I asked if they would be willing if the committee 
asked to put the brick fascia on that side. How tall is the door? It is... 14 feet? Yeah, it must be an eight. What they want it for is putting their golf cart on the trailer into this garage. Because right now the trailer is sitting to the side of the, the existing driveway. It, does, it doesn't say. It's eight feet off the property line on the side. It's 14 by 28. It's a, it's a nine foot roll up garage door. I did send pictures in from Street View and from the golf course side. And I did ask about the neighboring property because it, right now it is an unoccupied lot. And if they had checked with that neighbor and they had not, it is currently, the property is currently for sale. Yeah. So the way, the, the way the protective covenants read on outbuildings this one paragraph is what's applicable is outbuildings or accessory buildings permitted upon lots or parcels of land upon which there is constructed a commercial building, single family attached structure, or multifamily structure shall be entirely within the discretion of the ACC. So there, there is, yeah, it's just up to you, up yeah. to us. Yeah. Um, is your block plan again? Yeah, sure. This come assembled? No. So there's the plot, and they're talking about putting this thing right in here. Yeah. Where? Actually, a tad farther back. Farther back? It, it looks yeah, like a little far. 10 foot, 12 foot back from oh, the yeah, front of the garage. Right there. Yeah. Sitting there in the driveway. Even farther. Wow. That's, that's some great oh, big sidewalk. Let me, let me show you the aerial of this. Mm -hmm. Roof color. It, it would match the existing on the house. Okay. Basically, it's right where that green, well, it's supposed to be lawn. When they bought it, it was like a, a little putting green type area. Okay. And it would take out most of that grass area. That is very visible from the golf course. It's what? Very visible from the golf course. Yeah, which is which is why I'm, I'm thinking what we used to do in the past was we we used to ask them to put a window in, it, just to, just to make it fit in to look like it's an occupied house as opposed to a garage, you know. And I did take some pictures from down on the cart path. I guess I'm. I, what what I'm was the little, use of the garage? I'd like to see the setback. Floor. It's going to be for their golf cart trailer, yeah, keep their like golf cart close. on it, it looks like and it's put the trailer close. in because they don't want to keep the because trailer no outside. Close. They think that that looks Tree awful. Tree screening right. between the golf course and Most the of that green would be gone. Well, all the green right. would be gone, basically, there. Did we actually have a park? Well, now? most garage doors are seven uh, foot, right? Sorry? Yeah. Most garage doors are seven foot. This is the nine, nine foot. At, uh, width, nine feet. Oh. They're either eight foot wide or nine so foot wide or can get up to And they're, and they're, and they're almost always eight. Okay, eight foot for a door. Just like, what, or seven, six, or something. It's, it's all what standard vehicles can drive under. It does show the setback lines, but. Um, okay, so he, he's, he goes to the setback line. Obviously, he's been driving there anyway. Trying to park the trailer. Well, the, the trailer is kind of angled off in front of where they were going to put the shed. But it's it, the back of the shed is going to be right about in here. And I'm standing on the cart now. You got to be pretty good backing up trailers to get it in a little shed like that. You're going to take a wall out. Do you just have to be sure that? Police is on level ground. Yeah, I think so. That's 
from the entrance to the driveway. Okay, so, so he hasn't been putting the trailer all the way back. So okay. it's going to be where that green is. Yeah. Another view from the street. Is he going to put a driveway in? He's just going to leave it gravel. Yeah. And that's also from another angle from the golf course. So it would be sitting essentially in here. Pretty basically. Close to the back of the house. Yeah. Kind of effectively even with the back of the house. Um, I gotta get going. Oh, oh sorry. Um, I gotta pick up Valerie. Yeah, that oh, that's right. I knew you had a time. Uh, what time do you normally get done? Well, eleven forty-five. <laughs> it's usually it's usually about two, two and a half hours at least. You know, yeah. nine, ten, thirty, okay. eleven thirty. Usually eleven thirty-ish. Someone can you call me. We defer. I'll go with you. We'll let you know. Thank you so much, George. Yes, thank you, George. It was nice meeting you in yeah. person and not yeah. just by a Zoom screen. <laughs> And, and 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 remember, you're committed for a while here. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and we'll send this the paper like the <laughs> paperwork we talked about earlier. We'll get that sent to you by email. Okay. Where is yeah. this located? Where's the hole? Which hole is that? I don't know. I don't play like golf. Come on, man. Give me a break. <laughs> I can't picture that. Well, it was it was. Uh, to get back in there, I had to drive past the a storage shelter area. I think it was the questionable one that they cut all the trees down <coughs> years ago. And I had uh, it was I got turned around and trying to leave. Because this is Balboa Golf Course, right? I think it is. From, from where I was driving, I think it is. Yeah, it's Balboa. Yeah, Balboa. This is either a very old photo or very. Winter time. It's it's just winter time. <laughs> oh no, that is the old photo. That's 2016. I forgot That's, to change my imagery. Thank you. Okay. There's the 2020 imagery. Right Still not a real green fairway. No, they they typically do aerial imagery when the leaf off yeah. happens, yeah. so you can see yeah. more. So it's winter. Ah. Yeah. Um. Oh, that looks like I'm number sorry, one. Sorry, that's the golf that cart path. It actually is quite a ways back from the course per se. Well, I'll see how far it is from that car path if you like. The only time I go to the golf course is to go walk when they're closed for maintenance. <laughs> well, does anybody, anybody, anybody feel that we, we should ask them to try to put a window in the back or just leave it solid? Actually, that sits up on a hill, doesn't it? I mean, no, that's, that's, that's a hundred feet right there. That's more than I thought. But then why not number one? It's, 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 there's really not much of an elevation slope to it at all. Oh, my God, that was a Honestly, creep. That's a Honestly, my concern is, okay. is simply the shed feel of that garage not having any similarity to the house design or right. structure. It is very much a shed with a gravel driveway on a golf course. I don't think I can support that, personally. It would be tough for me to to see that as, a, as fitting with the neighborhood or really complimenting the house. I mean, I, what was your thought? You were out there. I kind of thought it would stick out like a sore thumb. Yeah, I, you I know, don't know. And I, I, you know, I, I felt for their need and understood what they wanted to do. And, and it's a beautiful home and they take excellent care of it. I mean, the front yard was, was really pretty. Um, I'd much rather see an uh, enlargement of the garage, of the actual home, or something. That was going to cost them yeah. forty thousand dollars. It's all the air to put it to put it, to put it, it because yeah. all their utilities would have to be moved at that point. So they're like, you know, I guess we're moving. But a but a stand alone of similar size that, like again that, that was done in brick would. Would probably be fine to match the house. Well, yeah, bricks that match the house. I mean, that's what Land, you're talking about, right there. Landscape, well, except for you have to see the other end. But well, even, landscaping even with, and a window or two. 
But even on the front this. end, is that what you'd want to see from the, if you were the next one? I mean, that's the, that's the, that is it, right? You know, this, this section here, albeit small, would be the brick fascia to match right. the house, but it's, it's not very big. I mean, yeah. the, the majority of the front is the garage door, and then down the sides, it's wood. Yeah, and then in the back, I said, what, what's the back construction going to be? And it was going to be wood. And I said, well, would you consider putting the, the same brick fascia on the, on the back side so that when they're looking, it would at least blend that way? But you're still going to have that side view. Yeah. I like Dan's suggestion of the window. I mean, that, that helps soften that square chunk. They've got the window on the side. That kind of helps a little bit. Is that it? a man door on the side also? It is. Yeah. That's a, what are the existing garage doors? Are they are they white? Are they a paint? This one I don't know. They had the garage open when I got there. Yeah. I, I'll <clears throat> and it's not you know, gonna, apparently it's not gonna there's, <laughs> there's another one of these buildings in the village, but it was way up Cortez area, something like that. It was a much bigger lot, and it was an interior lot. You know, we're, we're dealing with two frontages here. I mean, the foundation box, <clears throat> essentially it's a skid foundation. And yeah, it's not going to be Honestly, a golf cart and a trailer is going to be over a thousand pounds. Start. It's shifting and the, the I just, there's I not just a foundation don't see this under being it. a good addition to that neighborhood or that yeah. property. I mean, as far as the just strictly on aesthetic. You think this is a skid mount? It shows yeah. to be a skid mount. Yeah, there's no, yeah, absolutely there's no skid concrete mount. foundation. So do you think you got to bring See, it in one piece? Look at it. See the skids on this? Is it. Yeah, I, yeah, but are, are, they, are, they, are they going to bring, bring that in one piece or are they going to build it? This is a machine over it. Well, they did some skids. Skids down. Skids Pre-built portable garage. Pre-built. Yeah, pre-built. So yeah, it's coming in. It says in 16 truck. inches on center, set into notch four by six treated skids. Yeah. But it's not going to have the bond roof. It's going to have it a regular hip gable roof. roof. No. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's got the hip gable. I'm sorry. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, that's pretty tacky. I can't support it. That's just not something that, to me, looks like something that's going to be that your neighborhood's going to be happy about. Yeah, I think if if it was bricked all the way around to match the house and built on, you know, a, a and on the foundation, yeah. freestanding, that that would go over much better. Well, yeah. even a brick veneer in front, in the back, a lot of the houses on that golf course have vinyl. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to have brick all the way around. It, it just needs to match the house, and it does. But, it does. But this one, I think, was brick in the back. Well, they, they uh, yes, the whole their whole house is brick. Their whole house was brick. Yes. Okay. Okay. Don't have a bad view. Unless they're the ones that so it's not going to be an as-built on site. It's going to be a moved in. Yes. Mm. It's cost savings. Pardon? It's yeah. cost savings. It's cheaper to build a plant built. Yeah. I just think it's 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 just a bit overwhelming. Yeah. And and I I do sympathize with with them. I you know I I see what what they would love to have and. But I just think that it's not going to fit in the neighborhood, and I can support it if it fits in the neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. If it, if somehow it was all bricked, then it would, yeah. then it wouldn't look. Right. And, and, and on a slab. And on a slab. And on a slab. Probably a slab. Absolutely. Yep. So you're going to get back in touch with them? 
Yes. Are you asking for a vote to deny based on aesthetic and not matching the house? Yes. Okay. I deny. Deny. <clears throat> I'll let them know. Dwayne, you cursed us by saying that. I did. And never I thought that. of that. It was like at work well, when you, somebody would say, oh, it's really quiet tonight. We're like, oh, don't you say You gave that. me that look. I've got one coming. <laughs> I think I used Sticky Wicket, too. Okay. 36 Asturias Way. Is that me? Yeah. New one. Okay, this is a new home we've had. <laughs> This is a, uh, wow. a new home. Rebuilt. It's a Renaissance home. It's their typical submittal. <laughs> Probably will not look exactly like what they have here, but it will be very, very close. Yeah. Uh, all the, all the, the colors are matching. It match, matches the neighborhood. Uh, we do not have and I don't know if we require it anymore, a tree conservation plan. However, I'm going out there, there are plenty of trees there. There's a lot of uh, uh, pines, but there's also a lot of hardwoods. I counted at least nine or 10 hardwoods that can easily be saved and not interfere with the construction. So if we are going to get into uh, tree conservation, uh, they can meet it easily. Um, other than that, there's nothing complicated about it. The, the uh, landscaping is allowance. There's there's no landscape plan, but I, I'm not sure we're requiring that anymore at this point in time. So uh, the only thing I'm I'm concerned about is that uh, they haven't submitted any kind of tree conservation plan. But again, on the common property, we're really only talking about the front yard anyway. So it should be easy. But there's, there's it, it can be done. I mean, there, there's, in the front, I've got at least three or four nice hardwoods that could be saved in that area on the lower right-hand side. Of course, the upper part is all driveway. Yeah. Uh, the lower right-hand side, there's three or four nice hardwoods that could be saved. Uh, other than that, the property is fine. I don't see any, any problem with it. Oh, approve? Approve. Um, before we go on to the next one, Dwayne, do you have a, a phone number for Mr. Brokaw with you? But I think. Because I, yeah, I was going to say, we've got just a few more permits. I, I don't, I guess. I wouldn't be surprised if he shows up early. He's <laughs> on his application. I have some. Yeah, sure is. Okay. Well, I guess, you know, it's, it's 1025, you know, he, the next few permits should fill in until 11. So don't worry about it. I have his phone number if you need it. No, it's okay. I think we've got, I think, four remaining permits that should fill in the next half hour yeah. mm -hmm. and give us a, a bathroom respite in there also if anybody needs that. Um, let's see. All right, it is. This was a really unusual house. He has a, a patio in the back. He has a pergola on part of that patio. <coughs> he wants to put a gabled roof that would fit into the roof of the house and then extend out over the patio. There is a picture. Yes. Bottom left, yep. Hey, Terry. Hello. That's the area that he wants to cover from where the kitchen steps are butting that um, bay window, yeah. covering that little rectangular area there. And the hip roof will tie in and then come out from, from the roof. Okay. Um, the reason why I said this is unusual is that it's actually going to help balance his house. Because, Stephanie, can you pull up the uh, aerial? Yeah. Is he getting it's, rid of his pergola? No, he's keeping the pergola. 
is in a little butt to the so he's not coming all the way out to the edge of the concrete no all right this is this is where <clears throat> he's going to put the roof this here is it this roof is at ground level in the backyard oh it's steep back there wow. it's like a lower it's like a split level home kind of thing it i had to walk up about three flights of stairs to get up to the front door <laughs> and then when we walked out i'm like oh my it looks like the pyramids of egypt over there and he said that when they bought that house, that it was like, what is that? Well, then they realized that this is another garage and a workshop back here. Yeah. But it is right at ground level. It's very, very unusual. Okay. So actually, putting the roof here is going to balance out the back of the house. <clears throat> Interesting. All those homes are set incredibly high. Yeah. Yeah. Deep on the lot. They are big. They are big. No, I'm talking about the two to the left. They're at their back property line. Yeah, you know, I to me, I'd rather have some usable backyard. But yeah. it, it may be steep. I don't know. It may, it's it may you be know, bad. it's man, this is fairly level, and then it it goes up and levels out again. Huh. He's he's currently cleaning out the jungle that was back here. This was a foreclosed property okay. that had not been maintained. So. So it's all going to match back the existing house. Yes. Not yes. Same same roof yeah. color. Yeah. Same. It's not it's, steep as I thought, although it is steeper up here. You can see how it's falling off two, right there. Five, two, you know, you've got common property behind the jungle. You're right. But he's he's <clears throat> currently lurking on the landscaping. I mean, they they really are trying to, to work on fixing up this house. Yeah. There's a Bennett Brothers fountain in the backyard, <laughs> and mm -hmm. it, I, this is the beginning of the fountain with the waterfall, then it comes down and comes into another pool. His grandkids use those as pools when they visit. <laughs> so, I mean, he's, he's, he's looking at the property values. It'll blend, so I vote for approval. All right. <clears throat> okay. Uh, another that I consider incredibly easy. This is uh, 46 Elcano. Um, his whoa, that's a nice one. <laughs> is that a lake property? Oh, I'll take it. <laughs> Big lake. Uh, essentially, one plat down there at the bottom that tells the story. Uh, yep. Um, yeah, just here. Perfect. Uh, again, all this is the garage sticks forward a bit. So this is a garage door coming out the side back of the garage around to this little <clears throat> additional patio space. The next, he's actually got a photo of one more down. So he's squaring off the he's additional patio off, to meet the corner of the house. And that's what he's squaring off. Flip it. Okay, so he's just coming out to the edge of the house with that existing slab and tying into the little sidewalk coming from his garage. And he's not removing any landscaping because that yeah. plant is in a pot. So, yeah. so I thought it was an easy, I recommend it's approved. Approved. Dan, 56 Durango Way, a deck. I would remind you that this may be Dan's last. Oh, yes. Uh, Drum roll. <laughs> well, we're going to have to find this guy. He's already 50% finished. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> the last one, a sticky wicket. Uh, he's doing a nice job, so uh, well constructed, but he's basically extending that deck out this way. Uh, go to a floor plan. Okay. So he's removing what's there, uh, or extending it rather, is the existing deck. He's extending it all the way out here. Oh, okay. uh, these stairs are, are existing. Uh, the railings are already to code what's there already and going down the stairs. So 
I assume he wasn't home, so we couldn't talk. I assume he's putting in railings to match what he has, which would be uh, uh, in accordance with code. The footings are buried, so I can't see what he's sitting on, these posts. No. They could be sitting on concrete, they could be sitting on rock, I don't know. I think that's an inspection's problem to figure out or what they do about it. Uh, but uh, the deck is already done, framed out completely and decked over about half the way. And uh, it's all well constructed. Uh, his only problem I could see is the fact that he's already started it well under the way and he can have it finished pretty quick. Other than that, it's well done. Kind of like mine last time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly <laughs> like that. That's it. Okay. So basically, you just come straight out from that. Yeah. Just come straight out to the, <clears throat> to the right. Uh, Another 15 foot. I didn't see it. And you can see the footings there are, are on concrete. I mean, uh, yeah. Yeah, the posts are on concrete. Yeah. I assume the other ones are, but they're buried. And, uh, you know, I recommend approval, no problem with approving it. It's just a matter he should be double-charged. It's not over utilities or grinder? Nothing. Like the, 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 uh, the, the grinder is on the side of the house, actually. Yeah. So vote approve and um, with the notation on what we're going to do with the pre-construction. Yeah, now the, the only the only other problem uh, I can see with it, and I don't think it's a problem, is that there's no uh, site plan with this. There's no plot plan. Yeah. Um, but it looks like there's plenty of uh, room in the back, so it doesn't look like he's infringing on any it's not setbacks. Or, or like, no. Is that is that it? Well, we're, no, that's just not good. It is on the golf course. Actually, it's awful close back there. Yeah, but you can't. You can't. Oh, sorry. The golf course is pretty far back. Oh, his, far pro back. his property line, line is pretty close. Ooh, we may have an issue. <laughs> wow. We probably should get that on a site plan to see, just to ensure that we aren't hitting into that setback since yeah. it is a structure. Uh, this house here, they actually show a, a pathway going here. They have a uh, rock trimmings, they've included part of this area as, as their property. Well, look wow, at that. that is like right there. Common so, so you can see here's the existing or deck. Golf, yeah. it could be golf course. So the question is, Front coming out an additional 20 feet, how close to Again, these property lines are not exact. Right. Right. Yeah. So but we would need to see the actual either. plat. We just need to see it, make yeah. sure. Well, there, there isn't one. Well, oh. but probably there is in your office or something. Maybe. Some of them do. Maybe. Um. But when it's really close like that and we have a concern, we can we can ask them to get one. If we don't have one so that we can be sure. And um, we need to let tell them to stop building. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, I mean, you know, it, it, if they have to remove it, it's less that they would have to remove at that point. Ooh. I mean, we can have them verify the <coughs> pin locations and then even just tape measure it out. All right, now you may, you may have something here because here's a letter from uh, Sarah Downey to Wesley Carpenter. Mr. Ron Young of 56 Durango Way does not have an as-built survey on record at the POA title company or the county. Per the request of Charlie Brown, would you please be able to compare the dimensions of his plan to his property to verify that the plan does not exceed into common property, the easement or over any utilities. Please let me know if you have any questions. That was Sarah Downing to Wesley. Now, assuming he's done that. I say, is there a response from Wesley? Uh, I'm, I don't see any. Well, let me verify that. I would say we would not want to um, approve that. Yeah, let's know. hold it until we can verify and then we can do it by email. I'll check with Wesley and see what's been. Um, yeah, Sarah's the, got the works down in our office. So I'll, I'll, I'll check on that. You know, we can always do it by email once we get the confirmation on it. Yeah. Okay. So 
that is that denied or hold? Um, I would say, I mean, I'll deal with it today. If I can't verify it today, then we're going to deny it so that we don't have it, and then and then they're going to have to come back to us with a, with a site plan, an as built and site plan. Okay. okay. And we have one more that was that I didn't get on my list. It's six or Porto Place. Yeah. It's O Porto O P O R T O Place. This is a landscape. Um, you'll notice the com the resident's name. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. She, no, I didn't catch that. <laughs> she lives on Lake Pineda. Um, it's a very slight incline down to her 20-foot setback. She's got some flagstone um, spacers, uh, steps going down. She and her partner are in more advanced years, and there's some balance issues, so they would like to put a railing in to, to follow that that curve of the, the the bricks and stuff they've actually got some pavers in there now too you get a little um, sense of the walkway they have going down there now right? um yes and they want to put the railing next to it so they have something to hold on to as they're as they're going down um she put together a tremendous packet of what it's going to be constructed with step by step including the price for each item Essentially, it is a railing made like a chain link fence without the fencing. She's going to be using the, the poles and then the top railing to go down. They will be black. So this is this is a safety issue. I'm you know I'm worried about her falling and, and BJ falling. So I would move to approve. Yeah, tell me what I'm seeing. So You're it's going seeing. to be <laughs> those are all the different components. But it's it's she's not going to have netting. On, no, but it's, it's just going to be she's kind just of a fence rail. She's right. using the fence rail from a chain link fence, yeah. but not putting the fencing up. Has anybody been to any of the restaurants since we put the rail the, the railings on the patios to accommodate the ABC laws to delineate you know golf course and restaurants for the for alcohol beverage service. It's the same kind of fence. I can okay. tell you that. Right. It's it's yeah. It's really like you said. That's a good description. It's posts with the top bar yeah. and no but chain. It's pipe. It's pipe. <clears throat> pipe. Black. Okay. Broad iron kind of piping. And this is going to be in black. Yes. Okay. It's going to be yeah. in black. Approved. Approved. The only downside is that. <clears throat> It's actually the, the netting that holds those two pieces together. Well, I was going to say, she's got to be careful she's about... She's got a lot of brace stuff that she... She's, you know, they, they can put a screw through that top cap. She, she's got all sorts of bolts and stuff going on, and she's setting it down into concrete. Yeah, she has to put it concrete. It, one by one and a half footing is pretty uh, stout and... That's what you'll for, need. For a 30, what, 40 that, inch railing. Yeah. That's what you'll need. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Now, what what about when she gets down to the water? Is she staying? It's, it, she's out, she's set back from the 20 foot setback. It levels out there. Okay. So cool. she's, she's good. <laughs> okay. And like I said, it's, it's not a very, Big incline, but yeah. it's a safety issue. Okay. You know, I could probably do it with no problem, but I'm also younger than she is. <laughs> I could use it. <laughs> <laughs> you could use it in my house. <laughs> so that's approved on six of yeah. Porto. Yeah. Old business. The only thing that I I can think of is we we really do need to set our sights on getting some things firmed up, especially for the other half of the house. So everybody needs to kind of, at their downtime, look at those things, get some notes together, and we need to start. I will start with what I'll send you. What I'm gonna start with, for us just a baseline, get us started, is the <coughs> rules I sent you. 
Yeah, and the permits. Well, I mean, on the back of each permit. Like, yeah. I'm going to put okay, the perfect. fencing from that section I say, I'm going to put fencing on the back of fencing. And I'm put, I'll just send you each one of the permits with what we were kind of basically running with. Yeah. And then go from there. You know, and just if you see something that just doesn't seem to be pertinent anymore, or it could just be done with a variance, you know, make a little note to that. Or, or if you see something that is left out that needs right. to be added, you know, make a note to that, and then we'll discuss it at the next meeting, and hopefully we've got something we can put out to folks. This may be one of those <clears throat> upcoming meetings where we're going to have more a few emails in between. A few what? A few, few emails floating back and forth. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which is fine. Yeah, it really is. Dan won't be here. <laughs> yeah, like, whatever. Uh, he hasn't gotten off my email list yet. So. Casting. <laughs> so we didn't have any old business or or new business meetings this year. Really is. Mm -hmm. Only thing is that we are one committee member short. We're going to do that interview um, in about 20 minutes. Yes, one, one, one member short, mm -hmm. and I've had some people show some interest in applying also, so I don't know if within the next week we should have one or two more permits. So or not permits, but applications. Right quick, because I, I, Ken made a statement when Dwayne and Janet and I were, when we were um, interviewing George, oh. about kind of a, a good onboarding process and how do we train up the, the new members that are coming on. I mean, it's kind of an ever-evolving system anyway, but at least to make sure they have what they need yes. to feel comfortable <clears throat> as they set out in this new role. So. And I have a suggestion on that. Yeah. Going back to what you're going to be sending, it would, I think it would help Larry and George. It would have helped me when I came on. If we take the permits or the types of permits and just have an orientation or a session on just exactly what you're going to send these are the typical permits that we consider in ACC. Some permits never come, applications never come to ACC. But those that come to the ACC, these are the typical. And this is how we look at and treat those type of applications. I think that would be helpful for new people and myself, as opposed to just <clears throat> the opportunity to drive around with them. Um, yeah. that's, that, that's, a, that's where I was coming from. The drive arounds are always where I picked up the most. The, well, the, the sort of but you have to have a, a review a, process. I feel like sitting through one of these meetings gives you 20 <clears throat> chances. One of the most helpful things that happened for me. Dan came over to my house months ago yeah. on this landscaping uh, that no longer we're under, but he went over how to calculate um, the footage, square footage and flats and so forth. That was very helpful yeah. on just one aspect of it. So I'm, I'm coming off of uh, what he did for me and also for what Stephanie is talking about. And to end your of, point. In the comments. And to your point, then it sort of standardizes it for everyone. That yes. Show it up. They get close to a, if not individual views, they get. The and, and I remember when I came on, I did not get permits assigned to me. For the first few times, I just went with somebody else, so that that helped take the pressure off too. And I and I and I I like the kind of the orientation aspect. It's almost like the academy. I'm going back to my my career. Yeah. Okay. The academy doctrine, and you're learning the basics, mm -hmm. and then you go into field training, and the field training officer tells you forget everything that you learned in the academy. <laughs> 
this is where you're going to do. This is where you're going to do your work. But but you still, you know, you never forget what you learned at the academy. That's right. You know that that gives you your foundation, and then that's where I'm coming from. Then you learn the little nuances of how it it really works. Yeah. And you see that you know with the variances and stuff, everything can can change depending on what the permit is and the setting for it. So. Well, I know you already said it, but uh, Dan, sincerest of all <laughs> pleasures to work with you. Oh. Wishing you the best. Seriously, thank you so much for everything you've done for thank us. You. Yes. yes. And I'll, you, you I'll see you in my home. On the committee, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it's a big change in the last. He, he's been our senior years. advisor. Yeah. Caught all three of us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, we just went through that that covenant thing. That's what really took up our time the past three years. Yeah. He's going through the best, you know, the best plan. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it was all three years, but it's and, and now we yeah. now we get to kind of reinvent the wheel a bit. So, yeah. but hopefully we'll make it a friendlier wheel. It'll be more rounded than right. trying to roll it squared. And the other thing that might come out uh, of redoing all this uh, again might be that some of these permits that we did today mm -hmm. and and the past couple of weeks. Some of them were so easy that we wonder if they need to get to the ACC to be declared but, permits. But your deck looked like it was going to be easy. Correct. And then all of a sudden, oops, put the that, that, on. That's right. And where do we draw that line? And how do you draw but, that but line? But we, we talked about that last, uh, you know, Dwayne was definitely right. Like new homes. Do, do we really need to go out? Because how many times do you go out and, and once you can find the lot, it's just a bunch of trees and you're, you're sitting there trying to envision between the paper plat and what you're looking at where it's going to go. Um, you know, we're worried about the aesthetics and where the lines are. Well, permitting can look at where the lines are and they can also look at the elevation of the house. You know, is it, is it, going to be really outrageous or that that part of it can come to us and we can look it's going to look nice you know there's nothing weird about it the colors are decent it's not orange and purple and or whatever your favorite sports team's colors are or something honestly when you're when you're reviewing a new house plan and you're doing your site visit it's less about looking at the piece of property that that house is going to be on and more about the, the neighborhood exactly it. so so i could see you know yeah it, doing it somewhat but you know a lot of it is beyond what we need to yeah. to and worry about or the houses around it i think you get an awfully good feel off google earth or any yeah you, you know nothing says that if you can if you can satisfy by looking at google <coughs> earth a lot of times you know i'll pull up houses that are on the street on the real estate listings yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and you, you don't necessarily need to actually drive there. So. I should adjourn us. I have so moved. And we're adjourned. <laughs>